Okay, the periodic table. The periodic table is a very important item for chemists. When you're looking at the periodic table, there's a few things to consider. We've got to make sure we do not forget specific areas of our periodic table. So, we'll break it down. The first thing I want you to note, between element 5 and element 13, this is where an important piece starts. And it's this staircase that comes down. Very important for a chemist to recognize this area of the periodic table because it separates the metals from the nonmetals. Everything on this side are considered metals. Everything on this side are considered nonmetals. Okay, so it's very important as a chemist that we recognize that barrier so we know what we're talking about when we're looking at these different metals and nonmetals. Now, some of you will say, but what about hydrogen? Well, this staircase normally would continue and then it would cut across and follow over the top of those metals, leaving hydrogen as a nonmetal. Now, other area things to consider when we're looking at the periodic table, you're going to hear different words. You're going to hear the word period. And you're going to hear the word family. Sometimes we use the word group. These have different meanings. A period represents a row on the periodic table. The family and group represents the column. Two very important terms that get used when people talk about the periodic table. Now, when looking at the periodic table, a lot of emphasis that we'll use will be examining different groups. The first group that becomes really important is considered to be what we call the alkali metals. Alkali metals are found in group one. Alkali metals are very reactive metals. Uh, these things will react very well with halogens, another group on the periodic table that we'll get to. And they're all metals, they're shiny, they, they demonstrate characteristics of a normal metal. The second group, this one right here, this group is called the alkaline earth metals. The alkaline earth metals. These are, again, metals. They're reactive, but not as reactive as alkaline metals. Other columns to note that are important, the second last column, column 17. This is known as the halogens. So this column is the halogens, very reactive nonmetals, especially when put with alkaline metals. And the last column, column 18, this is where we find our noble gases. Noble gases are very important because they do not react. They have complete valence shells full of electrons. And since they don't need any electrons, they will not react. So a lot of the time we'll, we'll call them noble gases, but we might refer to them as inert gases. Now, other areas of the periodic table to note. This border that we've talked about. Okay? This border, any element touching the border. Okay? So element 13, element 32, 33, 14, anything touching that border are considered to be metalloids when we talk about them. We'll classify them as metalloids. Oh, I mean, I'm spelling the sink, but it fits that. Metalloids. And that is anything that touches that border that has metal properties and or non-metal properties. They're going to exhibit characteristics of both. So instead of calling them just a metal or just a non-metal, we'll refer to these ones as metalloids. So we're talking these guys right in here. Okay? Metalloids. Now, other areas on the periodic table that are of concern are the area right in the middle. So this section in here, you probably didn't touch this section in grade 9. Okay. This section in here is known as the transition metals. Okay. 
And then we've got these two rows at the very bottom that are kind of outside of the table. What you need to realize is that those rows actually belong right in here. When we take a look at them, we're going to see that row stuck right in there and this other one stuck right in below. If you follow the atomic numbers given, right, they'll follow in suit. Okay? Number order. So from 57 to 58, 59, all the way to 71, and then you'll see 72 back in order. So these rows go in that spot. These rows have specific names. We call the first one the lanthanide series. And the bottom one is called the actinide series. Now the reason we call these two rows uh, separate names is because they all display properties that are very similar behaviors. Um, but the main thing is we separate them out and it's just quick when someone recognizes that name, lanthanide. That is the name of that compound right there. Okay. So lanthium is the compound 57, and the lanthanide series would follow that. This portion of the periodic table, the lanthanide series and actinide series, don't get put up into the transition metal area because it would make the periodic table too wide, so they don't do this. So this is just a little quick review of some of the key parts of the periodic table. Hopefully this isn't new material to you.